going on, Vinyl Community? Welcome to another video with The Record Spinner. Like the new intro? Figured I'd freshen things up for the new year. In today's video, I am going to be doing the 2022 Vinyl Tag, Youngest Members of the VC Edition. Now, it is the beginning of the new year. That means it is Vinyl Tag season. And basically, everyone in the YouTube Vinyl community takes part in the Vinyl Tag. It's a series of 20 questions where basically you showcase 20 records for each question. It's kind of like a getting to know you type of deal. Gives people a sense of the kind of collector that you are and what music you're into. And it just subjects yourself to other members and channels within the YouTube vinyl community. Now this year, things are kind of being done differently because Andrew over at Tales from the Crate usually kind of kickstarts the whole vinyl tag season and then everybody follows suit. Uh, lately, he has not been doing videos. So I know that Rob Walker was the first one to do one. Uh, there was also another tag making the rounds. The channel name is escaping me right now. I do apologize. Uh, Norman Masloff uh, did his entry, but he kind of did like a combination of questions from both tags. Uh, there's also even a metal tag making the rounds, which is kind of its own separate thing. So everything is kind of running amok in the vinyl community in terms of the vinyl tag. So us youngest members of the VC decided to do something different. And the youngest members of the VC consist of myself, Mike over at Retro Spin Vinyl, Emma at 8 Vinyl Low, Jenna at Spins and Needles, and Marikin at Marikin Lehman Craddock. We kind of put our brains together and came up with 20 questions uh, that would be fun to answer and a fun way to showcase our collections. And while we were thinking of us as a group, you know, in terms of these questions, because we are all best friends, um, this tag is also can be applicable to anyone else that's watching. So we do encourage others to jump in on this. And um, I have been babbling way too much because I have 20 records to show. Actually, more than 20, considering this tag. So enough of the chit chat. Let's jump into what this video is all about. Number one, favorite pickup from a trip. Now, the trip that I'm going to be using for this example, just to tie it all in with the whole youngest members of the VC group, is the trip that we took to Nashville in the summer of 2021. I did a whole documentary about our trip. If you want to peel back and check it out on my channel, it is a phenomenal watch. Uh, many great records were purchased, but my favorite pickup that I got was the Pink Floyd Echoes, Best of Pink Floyd box set. Um, I have seen this particular box set in person a few times. Um, just never really pulled the trigger, but I saw it at a store called Spinners. It was behind the counter, and I immediately inquired about it because just it caught my eye, and of course, um, the spending blood was in me, let's just say. Not that I paid an exorbitant amount for this considering the condition, which is in, I would say, very good plus condition. Box is in great shape. The records, you know, a couple of surface, you know, hairline scratches, but it plays perfectly and it sounds phenomenal as well. And uh, this definitely stands out uh, for being my favorite pickup from the Nashville trip. Number two, favorite third man records release. And just to also tie it all in with the Nashville trip, we visited Third Man Records, the storefront in Nashville. And that to me was just hands down a religious experience. But in terms of my favorite release from them, that was kind of hard to pick. But I am going to showcase one of my most coveted Third Man uh, releases that they've done. I never thought I would own this at all in my time collecting. And this is The White Stripes Live in Mississippi. This came out as part of their vault subscription service uh, back, I want to say, in 2011. And this right here is the final White Stripes concert ever. Um, I remember before I got into vinyl collecting, this was of interest to me. And I found like an MP3 rip online of this particular release and I burned it on CD. And that's what I kind of lived with for a while until there was a member of the Third Man Collectors group on Facebook that was selling some uh, things. And um, there's a seam split on the top, which right off the bat, I'm like, perfect. That decreases the value because this is one of the more sought after pricier releases that the vault um, has seen. And made him an offer and he went with it and it ended up in my collection. And this is, like I said, one of my most coveted third man releases. And I think just given the historical nature of it, 
it is definitely my favorite Third Man release. Number three, favorite country album. Now, this one's kind of tricky because I have a little bit of country in my collection. Um, a little bit of Patsy Cline, a little bit of, excuse me, Johnny Cash. But um, I feel that I have to listen to those records more and also those artists more and dig deeper into their catalogs to determine, you know, what is my favorite of theirs. But I do have a pick. This guy can fall in country, you know, sort of circles. He's also more of a folky kind of guy. He does a little bit of rock. Um, hands down, one of the greatest songwriters of the 20th century. And that is John Denver, Rocky Mountain High. This album is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, there's the Season Suite on here, uh, which is this great epic piece with a bunch of, you know, small musical segments. Of course, the title track, Rocky Mountain High. Uh, he does a cover of... Um, Beatles, Mother Nature's Son, um, Darcy uh, Farrow is great on this, uh, Goodbye Again is another one, so kind of teeters into country folk kind of territory, but um, this is just an absolutely solid album. Number four, a suggestion for the youngest members to pick up. Now, in our group chat, I have talked about this band so many times and i know for a fact um mike has listened to this album but i always tell the others to check this album out first and the band that i'm talking about is of montreal this album is called satanic panic in the attic uh one of my co-workers at the record store that i manage um played this album and it immediately caught my ears and I fell in love instantly and I became a massive of Montreal fan. Um, best way to describe it, there's elements of the Beatles, the Kinks, and like Sid Barrett era Pink Floyd, but there's a slight twist in terms of some like electronic, you know, type influences. Um, I would say like this is the perfect album to check out and then this determines whether you want to work backwards, listen to the more 60s sounding stuff or work your way forward into the more kind of electronic type stuff. Um, but this is an album that I've definitely talked about so many times to the group. So um, you youngest members, if you're watching this, you need to get this in your collection. Such a great record. Number five, an album a youngest member has subjected you to. Now, to kind of tie it back in with the Nashville trip, uh, when we went to Third Man the second time, uh, Marikin picked up uh, the limited color variant of, of the band The Wallows. They did a set at Third Man and they released it on the label. So she picked up the color variant, but she already had a standard black vinyl press in her collection. And since she got a very nice upgrade with the colored variant, which is, like I said, limited, uh, she went ahead and gave me her standard black vinyl copy. And this band is absolutely solid. Great sense of melody, slight kind of, you know, Beach Boysy type sound in places. Um, I need to get some of their uh, studio albums. I know we have them at the store that I manage. I just need to get them for myself. But this live release is absolutely phenomenal. Um, just judging based off of when this was recorded, this is recorded um, direct to vinyl. So they cut, you know, cut it on an acetate and then they use that to press it up. So it is completely raw and live and um, just a cool vibe in general with these Third Man Live releases and an absolutely great band. So thank you very much, Marikin, for subjecting me to this. Number six, an album all youngest members have in their collection. Now, this album was gifted to all of us by Marikin uh, since Christmas was just right around the corner. Um, and that was the running gag because when we FaceTimed and we were opening the gifts together, um, she put little notes on each of the records that we received. And this right here, it was her favorite release that came out in 2021. And just after a while of seeing several people open it, we were like, hmm, I wonder what that could be. So an album that I can gladly say that all us youngest members have in our collections is this album. This is Roger Taylor's Outsider. Of course, Roger Taylor being the drummer of Queen, which is Marikin's favorite band. Um, honestly, this is a very solid album from Roger. And shockingly enough, I don't have any other 
um, Roger Taylor solo albums in my collection, and that has to change. I want to check out Strange F uh, Frontier and some of the other ones uh, from that time frame. Uh, but no, this is an absolutely solid album. Very melodic, great harmonies, great vibe, very eclectic as well. There's a lot of different, you know, shifts in terms of, you know, genres on certain tracks and such. But um, very enjoyable listen, and it is an album that all of us have. Number seven, an album I hope to find in St. Louis. Now, why do I say St. Louis? Well, because there is already talk of when our next big meetup is going to be, and we are planning to go to St. Louis sometime in the summer. And an album that I am hoping to see on in person, granted, I have a copy that I'm going to show on camera, um... I'll explain everything. Uh, an album that I hope to find in St. Louis is a genuine copy of Kiss Sonic Boom. Now, Kiss Sonic Boom, right? All right. I'm not going to go too crazy. I don't want to go running on a tangent. Kiss is my favorite band. And this was the first album to come out as a new Kiss album in my time as a Kiss fan. So when this album came out, this was a great time to be a Kiss fan. Needless to say, I absolutely love it. It is one of my all-time favorite Kiss records. Um, this came out in 2009. They did a vinyl pressing in 2010. They pressed it on five different colors, 1,000 copies each. And as of right now, copies go for roughly $300 on average. Now, what I have in my collection is an unofficial pressing. Um, it's just a single sleeve on colored vinyl. The actual version comes with a gatefold sleeve, a poster, prints an inner sleeve, and a colored vinyl, depending on what color you have. Um, if I ever see one in the wild, um, just considering my impulse notions, I will buy it on impulse. But considering that I, I like to think of the youngest members of the VC as some good karma to have, um, you know, amongst myself, because we are always enabling each other to buy things. And we always find great things when we shop together. The Nashville trip was case in point. So I hope that when we are in St. Louis, I can come across a genuine copy of Kiss's Sonic Boom. Number eight, a compilation with multiple slash different artists. The record that I chose, this is Nuggets, original artifacts from the first psychedelic era, 1965 to 68. This is a two LP collection of just various different psychedelic rock tracks from that time frame from the mid 60s. So on this, we have the Electric Prunes. Uh, I believe 13 Floor Elevators are on here. Um, Amboy Dukes, Ted Nugent's old band. Um, there's also um, the Naz, which was Tan Rungren's, um old band. Um, just a lot of great psychedelic rock stuff from the 60s. This is such an enjoyable listen indeed. And I'm uh, super glad that I picked this up. I actually bought this uh, when I was out record shopping uh, with Mike of Ret Retro Spin Vinyl, uh, a fellow youngest member. Uh, we went to a Spin Me Around in Pennsylvania, and I picked this up. So compilation with multiple or different artists. Number nine, favorite release of 2021. So I approached this in terms of new albums that came out in 2021. And the record that I chose is the newest album from Courtney Barnett. This is called Things Take Time, Take Time. This is such a pleasant album here. Um, I would say this is definitely Courtney's most uplifting record. Because um, normally with her first two albums, you know, there was a lot of, you know, angsty, melodic type moments. Um, and overall, lyrically, like she tends to write in a very kind of, I don't mean to say Debbie Downer, funny enough, that's one of her song uh, titles. Um, but like two albums in, I was like, I think we're ready for a slight change in like sound and, you know, style. And honestly, this is a very mellow, uplifting type of album, which was the kind of record that I was hoping to hear from Courtney at this point as a fan. And this album is just absolutely brilliant. Um, definitely seek it out for yourself. You will not be disappointed. Number 10, showcase colored vinyl or a picture disc. Now, I don't go too crazy over picture discs um, just because why buy something that is not going to sound good on your turntable. I mean, it's good for decoration, of course. If I get, if I can seek out picture discs for a very cheap price or like little to no cost, then I'll snag them and just put them in a frame. But I don't go too crazy about it. But 
I am a big colored vinyl guy. There is nothing more attractive than any piece of vinyl that is not black. So <laughs> the record that I am going to show uh, for this example is Brown Acid, The First Trip. This is the first volume of the Brown Acid series. Uh, Riding Easy Records puts out these compilations of just various, you know, underground psych rock stuff that came out around the 60s and 70s. So, like, stylistically, this will sit perfectly alongside your Deep Purple, your Zeppelins, your Sabbaths, you know, just nice, like, dirty, like, hard rock, psych rock from that time frame. But the color of the vinyl is absolutely beautiful. And I kind of bought this on impulse because when I saw that it was available, I was like, oh, that is so cool. I need to have it. Now take note of the color scheme of the cover. Check this out. This comes pressed on sort of triple color striped black, yellow, and red vinyl. And this is absolutely stunning. Uh, such a very unique variant to own and just also just beautiful as well. I mean, a record like this cannot be automatically pressed. These are definitely manually pressed because they have to put together the various pieces of the vinyl pucks to get that triple color formation going. Um, it is just an absolutely um, attractive piece of colored vinyl in the collection. Number 11, a record with purple on the cover. Now, I decided to go the extra mile. I decided to go with a band that has the color's actual name in the band name. And it's funny, I just mentioned this band just now. Deep Purple, Shades of Deep Purple. This is their first album, which came out back in 1968. Uh, this right here is the UK version. It's in mono. And also, just to kind of go another step, it's has purple in the background. So it does itself. <laughs> it was a rather easy uh, thing to pick out. Number 12, a song with a name in the title. Now I could have picked a million different things, but just for the sake of adding some variety and covering all bases of what I'm into, I went with the Beatles, Revolver. And this has one of my favorite Beatles songs. And that is Dr. Robert. There you go. It's all in the title. Number 13. And this is very intricate, and I wonder who made this question. An album with a cheap trick connection, but it can't be a cheap trick album. Now, just to tie it all in, I picked the 1978 Gene Simmons solo album. And Rick Nielsen plays guitar on the song... See You in Your Dreams, which also appears on Kiss's 1976 album, Rock and Roll Over. But Gene did a re-record of it, and uh, Rick Nielsen plays on it. So there's your Cheap Trick connection. And there's other Kiss and, Cheap, uh, Kiss and Cheap Trick connections as well, but we don't have time for that. Number 14, two albums that sound great back-to-back. -back. For this, I opted with one of my all-time favorite bands. That is Queen... You have Sheer Heart Attack and A Night at the Opera. Now, this kind of brings me back to my childhood because um, my dad um, had a truck with a tape deck in it and he would always convert his, um, his CDs to cassette tapes. Like he had a whole setup and everything. He would just convert everything there, bring the cassettes with him, play it in, in, in his truck. And I remember he had a tape that had A Night at the Opera on side A. And then Sheer Heart Attack on side B. Now, my young self, I had no clue that these were two different albums. I just thought that it was this massive double album that just, it was absolutely mind-blowingly amazing. Because, gosh, these are two of Queen's, you know, greatest records. Um, I mean, on this one, you have Killer Queen, Now I'm Here, In the Lap of the Gods Revisited, Stone Cold Crazy, uh, the whole kind of mini rock opera of um, Tenman Funster, Flick of the Wrist, Lily of the Valley. So good. And then, God, Not at the Opera, Bohemian Rhapsody, I'm in Love with My Car, You're My Best Friend, Prophet Song, Love of My Life, 39, I mean, Death on Two Legs, just these albums sound so perfect next to each other, back to back. I could sit down in one sitting, play these, and be so content. So, two albums that sound great back to back. 
Number 15, shout out a favorite slash local record store. Now, granted, I work at a record store, so I feel like that kind of excludes itself from this question. But the other one that I am going to give a shout out to um, is Sky Valley Records in Somerdale. Um, I have been shopping at that store for a number of years. I want to say almost two straight years. Um Right off the bat, I will say this, if you haven't really noticed with the records that I showcase on my channel and buy, I buy a lot of primarily new vinyl, nothing against used vinyl, I just always buy new, kind of, and that's almost exclusively what he carries in the store, and his selection, um, his being Chuck, the owner, um, he has such a phenomenal selection of new presses, uh, he's hooked me up with plenty of deals before, um, gosh, I've done several record store vlogs there, uh, with Chelsea, my best friend, aka the record spinneret. I've done some stuff there with my dad, uh, with Mike at Retro Spin Vinyl. Um, just a great store, um, and just full of amazing stuff. And, um, I've been meaning to, uh, go back there and, uh, spend some dollars because, yes, even though I do work at a record store and I have my perks, it is important to spread the love to other record stores. So, Sky Valley is definitely my favorite. Number 16, showcase a bootleg. Now, this is an easy thing to do because I am a massive bootleg collector, and I think I may have created this prompt. So the bootleg that I am going to be showing you guys is this one here. This is Led Zeppelin, the Night Stalker. This is live at the Forum in Los Angeles um, in March um, 1975. Uh, this is a soundboard recording, and it sounds absolutely fantastic. Opens up with rock and roll, goes into sick again, In My Time of Dying. Uh, song remains the same, Rain Song, Trampling Underfoot, Stairway, Whole lot of Love, and Black Dog. Not exactly the full show, but you basically get the heavy hitters here. Um, this is such a great bootleg. If you see this out in the wild, pick it up. You will not be disappointed. Number 17, your favorite album by your favorite band. Now, granted, I tried to keep things all different, but there's just one particular band where that cannot happen, and it is my favorite band, which is Kiss, like I said earlier. Um, this is their album Love Gun, which came out back in 1977, and this is my favorite because this right here was the first Kiss album that I ever bought as a kid. My dad and I would go to the local flea market and he would look for, you know, baseball cards for himself. And I, he would also look for cassettes as well. And I would always buy up cassettes because I had a little Fisher Price tape deck. And there was there was a couple times where I left with a bunch of Kiss cassettes. And my earliest recollection of coming home with one was this album here because there's home movie footage somewhere. Maybe I'll showcase it one day um, of... At my third birthday party, I was given like a plastic guitar and I was playing Love Gun on my Fisher Price tape deck and having a wonderful time. So this album is very nostalgic for me and just, I mean, and the songs too are, um, are fantastic because you have the title track, I Stole Your Love, Christine 16, song hasn't aged too well, uh, <laughs> Got Love for Sale, Almost Human, Shock Me, Plaster Caster. This album is just absolutely phenomenal kiss at the top of their game back in the 70s so favorite album by my favorite band number 18 favorite or inspirational lyric um i can definitely see how these lyrics can be inspiring um and they definitely stand out as one of my favorites i feel like i've talked about this before on my channel but um king crimson in the court of the crimson king the song epitaph has some of my all-time favorite lyrics. P um, Peter Sinfield is such a wordsmith with this song. Just to read off a couple of passages. The wall on which the prophets wrote is cracking at the seams. Upon the instruments of death, the sunlight brightly gleams. Um, and then the chorus as well. Confusion will be my epitaph as I crawl a cracked and broken path. If we make it, we can all sit back and laugh. But I fear tomorrow I'll be crying. Um, just, it paints a picture in your head of just this, it's almost like apocalyptic in places. And just, you know, to read off the second verse, um, knowledge is a deadly friend when no one sets the rules. The fate of all mankind I see is in the hands of fools. Um, it really hits hard. And I swear the last time that I saw Crimson, um, I believe they played Epitaph and just... 
I cried because the lyrics hit so hard. So absolute brilliant stuff right here. King Crimson Epitaph on In the Court of the Crimson King. Number 19, favorite piece of classical music. And for this, I am picking... Pictures at an Exhibition by Modest Mazorsky. Um, now, what I'm holding in my hands is the Emerson Lincoln Palmer rendition of it, where they basically took the piece and they kind of did their own arrangement of it, but they also embellished a little bit, added some lyrics, and added some other things of their own. Um, just an absolutely phenomenal piece of European classical music. Um, I still actually want to get a vinyl copy of the original, you know, Mazorsky like score. Um, that has yet to happen. I'm really hoping that can change one day. Um, I'm sure maybe Analog Productions or someone did a pressing of it. It's got to be out there. But, um, but no, this is absolutely phenomenal. And I do have to say, in general, when it comes to Emerson, Lincoln, Palmer, given that I started listening to them when I was like in the third grade, what third grader listens to Emerson, Lincoln, Palmer? <laughs> um, it is thanks to them that I got more intrigued with classical music because, of course, they, they did a bunch of stuff by Aaron Copeland and a few others. So just... You know, it's thanks to these guys that I grew more of an appreciation for classical music. Now we have the last prompt, number 20, best song from the past 10 years. And Mike really picked a tough one <laughs> when it came to this question, because honestly, I don't know if I could answer that. Best song from the past 10 years. There's a lot of great songs that have come out in the past 10 years, but I don't know about the single best one. But... I do have a response. <laughs> and that is Kurt Vile. The album is called Waken on a Pretty Days. I'm going to go with the opening track. It's kind of like a title track. It's called Waken on a Pretty Day. Um, this song is absolutely wonderful. It's roughly nine to ten minutes long. Um, it has a certain twang to it that musically reminds me of like Leonard Skinner's like Simple Man. But vocally... Kurt's vocals on this, as well as his wordplay, it's almost like stream of consciousness. He's kind of just going with the flow. Um, it has this sort of hazy, just dreamlike effect to it. Um, it is just absolutely beautiful. It sets the tone beautifully since it's the opening track. And also, Kurt Vile is one of my musical heroes. Um, he's a local guy from Philly. Um, he is one musician that, like, when it comes to, like, meeting musicians, like... I know that they're people like all of us, like you watching, myself, and everybody else in the world, but this is one guy that I think I would be starstruck if I had a chance to like see him in concert or meet him. Just His music really left a mark on me when I discovered it back in 2016 uh, during a very interesting time in my life. So um, yeah, one of the best songs that have come out in the past 10 years, this, uh, this album came out in 2013, so it just about fits the past 10 years mark just by uh, just a year less so uh fits the mark perfectly and you thought that was over oh no no we have a bonus question right here now before i say what it is let me give you guys some context um this involves all youngest members and their favorite artists so obviously my favorite band is kiss uh mike's favorite artist is johnny cash emma's favorite band is cheap trick Marikin's favorite band is Queen, and Jenna's favorite artist is Frank Zappa. And for number 21, the bonus round, Connect, Cheap Trick, Johnny Cash, Queen, Kiss, and Zappa all together in a Connect 5. So there's got to be this continuous line of connection between all five of these bands. And after some intense research and also prior knowledge, um, here... Here's number 21. So it's all going to start with Queen and the opening act for their Japanese tour of 1977 was indeed Cheap Trick. Now that same year, Cheap Trick had also opened for Kiss. Now Kiss's label Casablanca um, had secured financing from Warner Brothers uh, when Casablanca first started by Neil Bogart around 73, 74. Now, Warner Brothers had also distributed albums on the Bizarre label, which was home of Frank Zappa. And Frank Zappa had also done a cover 
of Johnny Cash's Ring of Fire on his live album, The Best Band You Never Heard in Your Life. So there you guys go. That is the 2022 Vinyl Tag Youngest Members of the VC Edition. Now, I can tell you right now, the other members um, of the Youngest Members group are going to be participating in this tag. They will upload it on their uh, specific channels. I'm not sure if we're going to be releasing them all simultaneously. Might want to check back with them in about a week or so, see when they get their videos up. But best believe they're going to put up their entries. And if you are watching this and you are intrigued with this tag and you want to do it for yourself tag you are it we would love to see your responses if you enjoyed this video please go ahead give it a like subscribe to the channel and if you want to support this channel be sure to check me out on patreon see you guys in the next video and most importantly keep the record spinning